Okay guys, let's talk about the film Selma. Now Selma is, I'm pretty sure the first film and so far only film to actually be specifically about the life of Martin Luther King Jr. Now, I'm guessing you all know about who he is. And what a first film it is, because this is breathtaking in how good it is. Like when, when I first sat down to watch this film, I didn't think I'd like it that much, because I am not necessarily a big fan of history films. I mean, I like them, but something really needs to go into them to make them feel cinematic, because oftentimes th there's nothing cinematic about them. They feel like maybe HBO straight to TV films, or it's just recounting history, and there's nothing all that creative about this, about the story in the sense because, hey, you have to follow historic events and they can't change it. And I do agree, they shouldn't change history. But a lot of times, certain stories, while very good and inspiring, never translate specifically to film as well. And I feel this one really does, and I think it's mostly because of the director, Ava DuVernay, Ava DuVernay, however you pronounce it, and how she handles it, how she handles the music, how she handles real life footage, how she does this little typewriter thing, kind of in the point of the FBI during the film, the acting, the shots, everything about this feels big, feels cinematic. I feel like I'm watching a movie even when it's not on the big screen, it feels like something that should be on the big screen. Because it does have an epic, a grandiose quality to it. And it really does seem to do justice to the actual person, Martin Luther King. While not, like, idolizing him too much and making him not a human character. They very much do humanize Martin Luther King. And every character in this feels like an actual person. There's no... There are a few, like, direct bad guys, but they're believable, like, assholes. They aren't, I'm not like, oh, that guy's just a mustache twirling Bond villain type guy. I mean, I believe these guys are assholes. And the good guys, I believe their issues, and it's a great way of showing, even though, yes, these guys aren't perfect, nobody is, and these people truly are amazing. I mean, they're fair to everybody. They're fair to Martin Luther King. It's fair to Lyndon B. Johnson. And just everybody showing both their strengths and their weaknesses as peak people and showing even with their weaknesses, they still were amazing. <clears throat> and as I said, the music in this film is amazing and how they use it is great. The scenes can be horrifying and, and terrifying to look at at times, but you still want to look at them because, again, how it's filmed and how it's all approached, it feels important. They make everything feel important. And even stuff I didn't know is still interesting. And I did. there's a few things in this film that I didn't know that are interesting. All the performances in this in this film are perfect. The David Oyelio oh, as Martin Luther King is amazing. I mean, I saw a few interviews a few times of him at the Oscars. And you can, you can just completely separate him from Martin Luther King. He really did transform into Martin Luther King. And that goes for all the other actors, especially because they're giving such great dialogue that's both potent and powerful, but also feels, again, real. And that's really my, the main reason I feel this film's good. It feels real, and it feels like it actually happened, but it doesn't, like, sacrifice its grandioseness or its largeness or its impact, or the epicness, sort of epic quality of what's happening for the sake of what happened, it used, it shows why what's happening was so important and why you should pay attention to it. And that's why I feel this is such a powerful film.